desire to eat like this. For the Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die, and then comes the judgment. I know you are hurting. I see the grief and the, the pain. I might not know the depth of your grief this morning. But one thing for certain, God knows you are hurting. And I want to remind us today that He is a friend of a wounded heart. And I trust that God will grant you the grace today to go through your time of grief. So to the family members, friends, loved ones, well wishers of Vanessa Spence, I extend sincere condolences to you and I trust that in your time of grief, in your time of pain, in your times of tears, that God indeed will grant you grace. God will grant you strength from heaven to take you through your time of grief. Just that he will lavish his grace on you today. We're going to continue this going to do the open prayer. We're going to ask you to stand with me once again. We're going to do the open prayer and then we get right into the open hymn. So please join me standing as we look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the Almighty God. You are the God who knows everything about everything. Lord, we are here today and many have questions. But Lord God, we might not get the answers to those questions today. But in the midst of it, God, we know that you are faithful. And we know that you are a good God, no matter what. So Lord, we look to you today. We pray for comfort. We pray for peace. We pray for hope. So to those who are hurting, to those who are grieving, Lord, you know the depth of their hurt, you know the depth of their pain today, right now, God. So I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that your grace and your peace, which passes all understanding, will now lavish on those hearts, O oh God, that need you right now. Father, we pray for the proceedings of today. We pray, Lord God, that everything will be done in decency and in order. We pray for your Holy Spirit, God, even as we have just sung anointing fall on me. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will saturate this place. And I pray, God, that someone will come to the realization today that death is certain. That someone will come to the realization that if she, he or she died outside of Christ, oh God, there will be the final destination. So we pray, God, even through the word from your man servant today, Lord God, that it will go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I am a fresh Lord, and I pray that hearts will be comforted through the word, hearts will be challenged through the word. God, we give you thanks for who you are and what you're doing, even in the midst of our grief, even in the midst of our pain. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the opening, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, hope oh, great thou art. O oh Lord my God.
have the first lesson will be taken from First Thessalonians 4, 14 to 18, which will be done by Bashar, Proverbs 16, is a cousin, and then after Bashar, then we have a remembrance.
that night from verse one, verse one to six as well. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in our all generations. Before the mountains were barked forth, or ever you have had, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, O children of men. For a thousand, for a thousand years you in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like unlike a what unlike a watch in the night. You carry, you carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. In the morning, they are like grass which grows up. In the morning, it flourishes and grows up. In the evening, it is cut down and withered. Twelve and last. So Jesus took Twelve and that. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for being here for reading the second lesson. We're going to have a reflection which will be done by Megan and your also a cousin.
correct by the tribute and the remembrance. All that has taken place even through the scriptures that have been read. But just before we hear from the man of God, we're going to go back on the program and we're going to go back to the first item that has been called Charlotte Spence and she wants to do her item. So at this time I invite Charlotte Spence, the sister, to come and do her item.
Ja, Ben. Bitte schön. Ja, Ben, gut. Allein Tag, sehr schön. Ja, Pierre, mit mir. A few minutes. Long. Alright, and uh, it's kind of drizzling. And I'm going to ask that whoever follow after me when they breathe. And I'll try to lead by example. Why would not share with us this afternoon without extending my condolences to the immediate family of Benisa? When I first came to Axanas, Vanessa was just about five years old. I didn't take too long for Vanessa to become my friend, both of my friend. And I thought to myself in the last almost 30 years, this must have been the hardest funeral for me. As I speak, my belly burns. I'm nervous. God, I've been this up. I'm going to work. And um, a friend should be a friend, indeed, and a friend. Indeed. Find this up. Find Ambitious and amazing. Noble and nourishing, extraordinary, exceptional. Benissa has two names, um, two S's in her name. And the first is special, the second is stunning, and the A ends it. Awesome and admirable. If you did not buy a Vanessa, it's because you don't know her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't believe that you would have seen Vanessa's teeth before you actually see her, if you understand her. Mm -hmm. so. When she was a you would be Vanessa's company. And though, awesome. Vanessa vibes her. That's all I want to say, Bill of Vibes. When it's a good Bill of Vibes. Oh, do you know who I am? Make you look so. Stop, man. Oh. I would always talk about this one. As I pass, and she was sitting at the barrack, you know. Even when I pass the gate, I would back up. Yo, girl, me am not ready yet. She said, why you put shot? <laughs> um, Benissa and I were friends. But well, guess what? Benissa not here in this afternoon. We can't do anything for Benissa this afternoon. As I said earlier, the only thing that you could do, if you are here and you have never yet trusted Jesus, is to give your life. God as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to take a few minutes and share a little menu with us from the Word of God. I want to start us in St. John 11. St. John 11 verse 25, Jesus said, but Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth shall never die. And you see all of that, all of that which I have read, it's very nice. But here's the question I want for us to ponder. Believest thou this? This afternoon I ask who you believe. Think about it. Oh Father, we thank you for this day. And even though, Lord, it is with broken hearts and, and discomfort that we gathered this afternoon, paying all our respect to the late Vanessa. Lord, I pray that in this prayer, 
Jesus as Savior and trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For when we will have learned this lesson in life, Psalm 29 and verse 11 brings us great assurance. Because when we will have learned that we need to number our days, when we would have learned that life is short and trust Jesus as Lord and Savior, God says, look here, there is peace in the midst of the storm. Fear will kill you. Yes. Remember a man in every life? Yes. A man when the people never want to let them fight. My Elijah come out and say, look here, if you don't move over the top, you're in my father. And the Bible says, for three and a half years, no, no, for three and a half years, no rain. And I find another time, Elijah said, we are a little body. A cloud on fire from heaven. A one woman, a little dirty little woman, sent a message for me. I said, I'm going to lay there, but why? If I don't kill you by tomorrow, then see you later. We're not just there. How about this? Elijah, the hour by this. I don't know why. Fear. He became fearful for his life. The devil would want you to be fearful today. I say to you, trust Jesus, and you don't have to be fearful. As we pray and reflect today, we receive the peace which the Lord has left for us. The one that passeth all understanding and is able to sustain us in the day of trouble. Let us thank the Lord for his strength, which he gives in times of weakness and when we face our challenges in this life. Let us today confess that we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. My brothers and sisters, remember, there is peace in the midst of the storm. My question is, do you have that peace? If you don't, you can have it. But you'll have to trust Jesus as Lord and Savior. Shall we pray? Oh Father, we thank you. We are, we are thankful, oh Lord, that your strength and your peace are still available for us today. Help us to claim it. Those of us, O oh Lord, who would have already claimed it, help us, O oh Lord, to minimize our trust in you. We pray for our unsaved friends and we ask, O oh Lord, that you will give them that sense of need for salvation. And even now I pray, O oh God, that if there be one man, one woman, a boy or a girl today, may you help them by faith, right where they are, as they are, through faith, to trust you. And if they so do, O oh Lord, help them to let it know, so together we can go. Continue to have your own way. As the service continues, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So that you would have received the word from the servant of God. And as he asked the profound question, do you believe? Do you believe? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And those shall be saved. Thank you, Reverend Smith, for sharing the word. We know that the seed of the word has gone forth. And we are trusting God with the outcome. I, I have, I had to meet Vanessa and was, I don't know her, but one thing I know about her, and this is not up for debate, or this is not up for debate. One thing I know for sure that she has been born in the best month of October. <laughs> just three days from my birthday, we're born in the same month. Just three days apart, and she's born in the best month. I'm not saying it is not over today. But 
whatsoever month you have been born in. The rest of the month, the best month, October, or the, the other month, whatsoever month you have been born in. If you don't know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, you must be born again. It doesn't matter the month you're born in, you must be born again. But I know that if we should have me, you know, we would be good friends, right? I'm going to continue on the program and we have some trick for you. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six trick for I'm just going to call three of them. First, I will take the second half. So the first we have is Kimona Space. Second one, Collective Solutions from a job. And the third one will be the Independence Hall Baptist Church. So I'm going to ask you kindly to come in this order for the first three tribute. Kimona Space and then Collective Solutions and then the Independent Hall Baptist Church. So please come in this order. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Should we for the late and suspense? Like a comet blazing across the evening sky, gone too soon. Like a rainbow fading in the twinkling of an eye, gone too soon. Shiny and sparkly and splendidly bright, here one day, gone one night. For those who don't know, my name is Tashana Smith and I'm representing Collective Solution. The first time I met Vanessa was on January 24th. And while outside on the gazebo, I observed her in an element. Everything about her was spectacular. When she opened her mouth, the first thing I saw was her face teeth. And there, I just saw my daughter, because she has a beautiful gap with her son. I loved her because she had a bubbly spirit, and then I was her trainer. So, I had fun while I was in the training room. As the pastor did say, when you are around Vanessa, there's never a good moment. We were destined to meet. And on World's Collider, January 24th, as Collective Solution, in Saturday, on the Amazon campaign. I was excited and awkwardly nervous because my first training batch of the year, for, for the first time, my first training batch of the year were all present, each showing different personality types. As I scanned each newly hired, I came across a friendly face. Yes, it was Vanessa's. Vanessa was full of vim, vigor, and vitality. She was comedic and laughed at her peers and even myself when we, when we did things that were hilarious. She was a people person and the class loved her. She wasn't afraid to talk the truth and even when I screamed to Mapley during training, it was Vanessa's face that checked me. Just imagine me, the trainer, Venting because of a misdemeanor one of my trainees had done, but then the entire team was being scolded instead of one person. Then, with that in mind, picture Vanessa's face, the humor accompanied by the understanding of why I was venting. She was a no-nonsense person, and she understood me well. Oftentimes, I would explain, sorry, she would explain to her peers they need to do better because Miss, your truly is doing the best to help. I can't remember one morning she came late for work. And right after I entered the cafeteria, she said, Miss, you can't get some time to drink some tea. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, I was caught by surprise. I said to myself, this girl has the audacity 
She's late, and I asked me to drink tea. So I said, why not drink tea at home? You're already late. Then she said, Miss, show on. We just want to dust our tea down the throat. I was, I was in awe and alarmed. And it was that very outburst that met my heart. And immediately, she was approved to drink as much tea as she needed. Vanessa was a friend to everyone in the class. She was a mediator, she was an advocate, she was a counselor, she was one of the best assets I literally saw in my training room. I remember that she was on a contact and the customer was very adamant that he needs to be compensated for a used product while he still keep kept the product. And boy oh boy, Vanessa said, yes. I don't know what you're doing, I don't know. I was like, what is the issue? And upon, you know, offering my assistance, she was well pleased and the customer likewise. Another time, I must say that she was a brief counselor. And this man next door, Jordan, is one such person who could share the same. He lost someone dear to him, and upon entering the training room, everyone but myself. So I was busy on my computer and a few persons came up to me and said, Hey, Miss, Jordan, I cried. She was like, Mama cried. I said, You lose in front of the day, I said, Really? I said, I lost my sister, so I know what that is. So the day went by and then I saw a person came up to me, Miss, we need your head. She didn't talk to Jordan, you know. So Mr. Vanessa, what can I really do now, Vanessa? What can I really do? And she said, Miss. Only you alone can do this. I believe that you have the words, you have the soft skills, and you are the best person I can really turn to because I failed. So I said, all right, send along to And I go on talking and talking and talking. I share how I agree with my sister. Charlotte, wherever you are, I know your team. Mommy dearest, daddy dearest, I know your team. I lost my sister to the sickle cell. And it was one of the most horrendous time in my life. I tried to be strong for my mother, my two kids, but it will never be the same. I want for you, though, to remember her in her happiest times. That's the only thing that will take you through. Do not worry about how she died. Do not worry about not saying goodbye. But worry about what you can do to live on and live in her name. On behalf of my organization, I want to give Mr. and Mrs. Spencer a kind donation. It may not be, you know, suffice, sufficient. So I'm going to ask if you come forward. Vanessa was priceless. There's no money in the world, no gem, nothing that we can ever, ever give. But in less than two months, Knowing who Vanessa was, it was miraculous. And we would never feel good enough to not be here. Everyone in the third and second line, except for the first four, are members of Connected Solution. And let me tell you, we cried. We cried. She was a family, family away from her own. And if you touch one away, imagine, you train her. You touch everybody. Because if you dare, I started with my training room and mess with anyone in my training room, you mess with all of us. So I love you both. You've never met me, but I know Vanessa, so I know you. You raised a beautiful daughter. She was like a sister to me. Her smile illuminates my morning, my daytime. And I want to give you a hug, those corona time, to be strong. And I also want to hand you this. Whatever you can do to comfort yourself, please accept. We love you and we wish you all the best.
they are not saying I'm wondering if this is a conspiracy, the trainer and the pastor. As a stranger coming to the community, I met Vanessa when Charles, her first daughter, was very young, about two years old. We became friends on the transportation, going back and forth to work and from. She's a really friendly person where she's always troubling me. But it, what is happening with you? Nothing from me here yet? I will say, Vanessa, leave me alone. She said, okay, nothing, let me give it to you. So she put her hand in her pocket and put her fist like this and said, I'm sure it's on you, take it. A couple months went by. She said, no, why are you looking like this? Something wrong, man. And she troubled me, she troubled me, she troubled me. And as the trainer said, on the gazebo, it has a lot of memories. When I was pregnant, I don't know what it's like to stand in line. She would say, Big Betty, come over here, stop. What do you want to buy? She was like, My lunch. We used to share the same door, but not in the same apartment. So, the cafeteria with the microwaves, we both use the same space. I don't know what it's like to stand in line to put food in microwave to have it warm. But it's not looking that for me. Shopping on the, the bus to come up to test up. She would always call me and phone. Where are you? Baby ready enough. On Fridays you know where bus is always hard to get. I was pampered. I was really pampered. She would, once she see me, come, see me coming, she would stand up, get her on her seat, and I would sit there, and she would stand. Not one time, not two times, many of times. I remember one, across from where we worked, there was a Scotia Bank, and as you know, Scotia Bank is a food bank. And I was walking in, going in and pushing in, and I did not see her. All I see was a crowd different colors and black heads in front of me. When I heard somebody say, No, they said, don't worry, I'm going to How many are waiting for you? Come on! When I looked, it was Vanessa in the line, first face in the line. So she said that, not wanting persons to know that she was giving me a skip in the line to go ahead. She was always there for me, and I kept telling, coming into action yesterday, moving from forest, not knowing many persons, she kept me under her wings. She always looked out for me once I'm on the road. One for my daughter from her grandmother's home. There's a, a shortcut down to go over on the next side of the road, Golden Grove Road. And I was going through with Isabel, trying to beat the rain, moving along, not knowing that there were cows, about four cows in the pasture. And I was running back with Isabel, and I heard somebody start to laugh. And said, my God, poor cow. No man, no man, come, 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 come. Rain was coming down, and she had her second child. And she took me across. And said, brave old man, brave old man, poor cow. And she laughed, and come back over. Vanessa, Vanessa, may her soul go in peace.
of the eulogy, which will be read by Mrs. Carol Wright. We are this the Carol Wright, which will be the government of the eulogy. Good afternoon, And I was one of the closest friends you would ever come across. Because Vanessa and I was born in October. Vanessa and I had a good relationship. And it was only some months ago when Vanessa said, Miss Wright, you know I still have that birthday present you gave me. And I look at her and I said, you must be crazy. And she said, of course I do. So what are we going to do next? I said to Vanessa, Vanessa, if life's fair, October 2022, we'll be having a showdown. It is not to be. Vanessa is gone. And I know that Vanessa will have strong girl enough. Anything she wants is sent for it. Vanessa, Daddy and I, we grow like brothers. And anything Vanessa wants, she would have told her father to tell me what she needs. And she's not taking no for an answer. She'll have to get what she wanted. I'm going to see if I can cut this reality for you. I don't know how much I can, but I'm trying. Yellow for the late Vanessa and Green Spence. Sunrise, October 16, 1992. Sunset, March 2, 2022. The great fierce Shakespeare penned the following word which fits so able in his voice. The clock of life is one but one and no one has the power to tell just when the hands will stop. At, la at late or early hour. So live, love, toy with a will. Place no faith in tomorrow, for the hands may then be still. Psalms 90 verse 10 to 12 says, The days of our year are three, four, and ten, and by reason of strength, they be four square. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and will fly away. So teach us the number of our days and apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let me remind us all that death is certain for every one of us. But death does not end it all. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. But after death comes the judgment. I clear up your mind using the words of God in Revelation 20 verse 12. John said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the book were open, and another book which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the book according to their works. Some people ask to be buried at sea, others ask for their bodies to be cremated. Whichever way you choose, we will all come back to face the judgment. Now what do you know about Vanessa? She was the last of four children born to Peter and Paulette Spence of Axana. As a child, she attended the Axana Basic School and the Mount Peter Primary School. While attending these schools, Vanessa showed great potential for the academics. This propelled her to attend the North Harvard Technical High School, where she excelled in the academics. After graduating from the Harvard, she attended a learning center in Montego Bay, which she excelled in business. Vanessa was a hard worker. She had a friendly character. She was kind to everyone. And I tell you what, Vanessa would feed you for the entire day. 
but it's not nice to help everyone, especially if she she know you had a need. She had a heart of gold, was a mannerable and respectable one. Everyone with whom she came in contact with. This, com this community has lost a gem, a great prize. When the news of her passing reached the community, there was not a dry eye in any household. She will be greatly missed and, are, and, and placed ever can never be filled. Peter, Peter and Paulette had a wonderful child. No matter how you take it, there was there. Living to Moy, Mother Peter, Father Peter, Mother Paulette, Sister Shannon, Brother Michael, Martin, Neville, her three children, Ebi here, Travelese, Karinda, and Jane, dear friend Curtis, seven hunters. Four hands in laws, step grandfather Nigel, cousin, other relatives and friends. To those of you who mourn, do not do so as those who have no hope. You will see your sister, your mother, your daughter, and your friend again in the great month. Sleep on our dear beloved Felisa. Sleep and take your rest. We love you well, but Jesus loves you best. Take your good rest in the hands of Jesus. May your soul rest in peace. Amen. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Wright, for sharing the eulogy of the financial state. And we have to talk later, Mr. Wright, knowing that you born in the month of October. All right, we will call Stella. Again, I don't see ready. Stella. And we'll not be ready to come. I don't see a book.
we are not a people who have no hope. We are sure that the word of God is unbroken in its promise that those who live in Christ and die in Christ shall be raised in Christ and shall live again. And so I want to pray for comfort for your family. I have met Charlotte. I, I want to express my heart to Vanessa Spirit, Peter and Vice. I want to express my heart to children, three children, who have this faithful day to release. I want to challenge each of you that as we relate to this reality before us, may we remember that our lives are so fragile. We can be here today, beaming in brilliance and in strength and vigor of body, then we can be cut down. We have to remember that we are fragile. And so I want to encourage you, we have driven by us from a leadership retreat in Montgomery to come to tell you, please let us order our steps in the word of God. Let us live as He wants us to live. So that if death were to be our experience, we will die in the Lord and be raised in the Lord. Our dear sister Vanessa was a sweet young woman in this community. And you can see by the crowd that she was well loved. All of you who have come to give support, the family is very pleased to know that you could have done this. And as I take my leave, I want to encourage you to remember that Earth's history is winding down. We don't have much time longer, for he that will come, the Bible says, will come and will not tarry. And for all of us who have suffered sorrow and pain and grief, he that will come, will come, and will not tarry. For all of us who have suffered sickness and mental anguish, he that will come, will come, and will not tarry. For those of us who death has pounced upon and knocked on our doors and claimed the lives of our loved ones, he that will come, will come and will not tarry. You who have suffered pain and, and have gone through much turbulence and you have struggled through this or struggled through that, he that will come, will come and will not tarry. And so I encourage you, boy of your courage, boy of your strength, stand strong in the master. Set your faces as flint and do not flex to the right or to the left. But look ahead to the eastern skies, because they shall part one day, and Jesus will come. And if we are faithful to the death, then we shall go home to live with him. Be comforted, be encouraged, for God is a faithful guide, and he who has promised is faithful, and he will come to reward each of us according as our, as our work shall be. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor and Lisa. Right now we have the help of Anitron, and then follow. We have a prayer for the Berean family, which will go by Reverend Edward Frey. So the family, you will please come and go to the